Hi everyone. For a moment, take a pause and ask yourselves which one of these is you. When it comes down to doing anything or taking a decision, would you call yourself an intuitive thinker or a non-thinker or a systematic thinker? If you tend to think intuitively, I'm sure you've been on that swing from the jackpot to the think pot. And you've been on that swing from the brilliant idea to when your muddle of thoughts leaves you confused. And I totally love this guy. If you don't think at all, that's the best situation to be in. While there are some people who find their way, craft their way through everything. Those are the systematic thinkers. Let me ask you something. All of you enter this room. Now, some of you consciously or subconsciously considered a lot of aspects of the chair you chose to sit on. Maybe you calculated its distance from the air conditioners, the proximity to the exit, the lighting. Chances are you took a seat at the back if you'd want to take a quick nap or if you'd want to evade the photographers. But in a nutshell, you possessed a lot of factors to reach the best result, the best output. That is, you see. And what you, so a few days back, I asked some of my friends to solve this maze. I'm sure most of you have spent some time of your childhood flipping through the tinkles and the children's digest and jumping with pride when you got one of these right that time. And when I asked my friends to solve this, I noticed that they were the ones who dived straight into the maze without any strategy took from 2 minutes 23 seconds to 3 minutes 9 seconds to find their way through. And those who were asked to follow a set of instructions took roughly 2 minutes 28 seconds, while those who were practiced for following these predefined guidelines to find their way out took 2 minutes 18 seconds. So what I noticed was that following a set of guidelines made them more efficient. And those who went where the maze took them or reached the end intuitively gave erratic results. So what is this intuition that guided them? Intuition is a neuropsychological phenomenon. It is the knowing without knowing how. What happens here is you feel something instinctual, something a certain inner voice says to you. You don't know how you did it, but you did. That is intuition. Like when most of us do math, sometimes that one tricky little concept that takes you to the answer comes instantly. Sometimes it does not. When I ask my friends how they reached an answer, their answers range from, ah, I do not really know how I did it, to I think I've done something like this earlier, to just trial and error. And then this idea behind getting ideas for solving mathematics or any questions, really, it intrigued me. Honestly, it baffled me because there was no way to guarantee an idea. And I had been on the, oh my god, that's the way it should be done side. And on the, god, why is this not happening side. And I could not explain for being on either of them. So I wanted to use a bankable approach to do anything and everything, really. And I think I found a way out. Algorithms. So what exactly is an algorithm? An algorithm is a set of instructions, steps, procedures, which you employ in problem solving. It takes an input and gives you an output. I began to use them everywhere. When I, when I walked on a broken road with mini rainwater ponds, when I wrote essays, when I solved mental aptitude questions, I used them. But clearly, since the topic of my talk is algorithms, the, their use goes beyond my everyday antiques. And algorithms are basically used everywhere. All that computer hardware and software that you use are fundamentally algorithms associated with mechanical models. You receive your Facebook feed via algorithms. You can, you can catch the latest episode of Game of Thrones because of algorithms. And an amazing fact here, the library of Babel 
It's an online library. It contains all possible pages of 3,200 characters, adding up to around 10 to the power 4,677 books, which have been written or will ever be written online without using any disk space, any memory. Now that is an apparently unrealistic task, which the Library of Babel achieves by using a pseudo-random number generating algorithm. Google revolutionized the way we obtain information by building upon an empire of algorithms. Now, I won't jump into the scary details of algorithms. So, and to stand my merit as a nerd, I'm going to follow this up with a complicated looking problem. So, here is a complicated looking problem. So, what we're supposed to do here, this is an armchair. It's a square tile, black and white floor. This armchair needs to be shifted a distance equal to its own width adjacently. But because it's heavy, we can only rotate it around one of its corners at every step and turn it only by 90 degrees. The question here asks us to rotate 90 degrees around one of the corners. So that's how we go about it until we reach the situation that the question requires. Now, since the question has asked us to rotate, and it has told that there's a 90 degree rotation at every step and around one of the corners, that's all it has given us. So that's all we must use. So we must ask ourselves, what changes on a rotation? We notice, now this is where we begin noticing things. We notice that the initial orientation was north-south direction. Once we rotated it, 90 degrees, it became east-west. Then again, north-south. We saw that, now this is to your help, the black and white flow. We saw that it was on a black block. Once you rotated it, it went on to the white block. So from north-south, it goes to east-west, east-west to north-south, and so on. And the color shift between black and white. Now, here we have some conditions that this question has given us, and we build upon them. This is when we recognize a pattern. What is the pattern? Why is the question asking us what it is asking? And what should we derive from it in order to get to the answer? That is when we recognize this little pattern. Every time you have a north-south orientation, and you have to change it on every rotation, it becomes east-west, and the color from black to white. So that means every time the orientation is north-south, the color is black. Every time it's east-west, the color is white. That's magic. Now, the question asked us that can we bring it to a position where it's on a white block in a north-south orientation, because that's what it was, shifted adjacently. And now we know that it is not possible. This way, we use something, we use this set of steps, and now we can rest assured that on this way, on our way, we have not done anything wrong, and we have reached the correct answer by looking into every detail that we could extract from the question. So we can now use this kind of a universal algorithm where we understand the task, set some conditions, build upon that information, and reach the answer. Now, understanding the question does not mean nodding your head in agreement with whatever it says. No, we got to question the question and extract every little detail out of it. Now, while designing any algorithm, we have to set some conditions upon which our algorithm will proceed. If these conditions are not fulfilled, we cannot proceed. Our mental, physical program will crash. So the other day, I was trying to select a dress to wear at my friend's party, and I thought I'd use an algorithm to do that. So 30 minutes had passed. Yeah, I was just doing the general stuff, select the priority from comfort, appearance, showing off your Zara, set some specifications, and iterate until you reach the final answer. And 30 minutes had passed. I felt like I lost three kilos just doing that. And that is when I realized there was a catch. My mom was hovering over me. And I think all of us will agree that no algorithm can solve for moms. So technically, I should have added my mom's set of conditions into the minimal requirements for my program to proceed. Now comes a stage where the major game plan resides, where we build upon the information we collected from the question 
and from the conditions we set, and form a way out, form a set of steps which we can employ in reaching our answer. Let's consider the emerging social evil of the terribly cruel and the ruthlessly entangled earphones. So, generally, we just look at them and start pulling whatever we see, and we end up something like this. We don't end up like this. We end up like what he's going to show us. When we, in these earphones, we need to understand the question. The question here is to open the knots. These knots have to be open, so we need to target the knots. And because we need to open the knots, we need to find a way out to open most of them by doing the least work in the least time. So that's why we target the strand which goes into the most knots, and without ripping apart the earphones, we twist our way out. So, um, algorithms find use in many routine yet tough situations, like when you don't know what excuse to give for not doing your homework. And given the procrastinators we are, we don't complete our homework on time, and we don't even come up with a list of excuses beforehand. So, oops. So, we succumb to the lame excuse of, ma'am, I was absent when you signed the homework. Because this is totally the 16th century, and Graham Bell hasn't invented the telephone yet for us to ask our friends. So I, so we can use an algorithm here, like just carefully consider what was the last time you gave that excuse, did your friend give the same excuse a minute ago, how long your homework has been pending, and stuff like that, general stuff. And in case you're wondering that I made this algorithm from experience, no, that was from observation. You all should do your homework. Anyway, now this doesn't imply that we use algorithms everywhere we see, because suppose when your math teacher asks you to do 2 plus 2, and you'll be like, the question here is 2 plus 2. It gives us the plus sign. Plus sign symbolizes addition. And we hold up our fingers, 2 and 2. You get the gist. So, these algorithms are not meant to replace intuition. Without intuition, we are all robots. But we can make these two work in tandem with each other and use our self-defined orders to tailor our needs. And we can make them work together in order to achieve the best result most efficiently. Algorithms are indispensable every, in every task. Like doctors use mental sorting algorithms for the diagnosis of diseases. They use a pre-designed way for, and for laying out the treatment protocol. Crime investigators, they use identification algorithms for picking up clues, analyzing personality traits, and eliminating spurious information. So relatively un inexperienced individuals, professionals, can train their brains according to this, according to these processes to make themselves work better in doing anything, really. And I think that over, um, we have always waited for ideas to come to us. We always look for that one brain wave that might hit us. But now that we know that we have this algorithm where we don't have to rely upon our emotions, notions, and instinct, we don't have to rely on these factors, and we can now make the ideas we want. And if for so many years now, humans have made computers think like them, maybe now, Humans can think like computers too. Thank you so much.